right. Thank you so much for um, attending our third and final session this morning. Uh, hopefully you've been enjoying them. I know that I have. So if you are new to this session, I am Audrey Harmon. I'm one of the State Ag in the Classroom coordinators, and we're so glad that you're here. I'm Melody Offield. Uh, welcome if you're just joining us, and welcome back if you've been joining us all morning. It's been a great morning. It's hard to believe that this is the last middle school session. And um, we've had some great presenters. So thank you guys so much. I know Connie's going to present another fabulous session. I'll be uh, manning the chat bar um, again. I'll have maybe some questions or some things to talk to you about Ag in the Classroom. If you have questions about Ag in the Classroom, I'll answer those um, there. Enjoy. Um, enjoy and we look forward to interacting with you guys in the fall and if you have questions about Ag in the Classroom don't hesitate to reach out to any of us. Good morning welcome to the third and last session for this morning we'll have three more this afternoon but thank you for joining us uh, I will be manning the Q&A so if you do have a question for our presenter directly please put it in the Q&A box I'll be keeping an eye on that and making sure that question does get answered thank you and just in case you've missed it this morning we have uh, put it in the chat a couple of times but all of these sessions are being recorded and so the session links as well as the uh, the presenter's slides and presentation materials and a professional development certificate will be emailed out to you next week so you'll have access to everything then um, Connie Siner is going to be turning her camera on and joining us. Connie um, gets to teach the fifth and sixth grade Ag in the Classroom elective class at Frontier Public School at Red Rock. So um, that's an exciting adventure. She actually gets to teach Ag in the Classroom um, throughout the school year to all of the students in the fifth and sixth grade. Uh, which is a little bit different than most classrooms, um, but she's got some great tips and pointers for you that she's going to be sharing this morning. And if you have any questions as we go, be sure to type them in and we'll stop her and ask her. So Connie, um, I'm going to let you turn your video on and we will get started. Okay. How do I do that? <laughs> it's awesome. good. Last time. Oh, hang on. I've got it moved down. That's what I've done. <laughs> Sorry about that. Is that better? Well, get in there. We can see your screen, but we're not seeing your video still. So you might just want to um, start sharing your video. New share. Just turn your, um, turn your video on. I'm pushing. There we go. There there it is. Is. Okay. That's what I was waiting for. Well, <laughs> golly. It worked so well last week. It did. Okay. The desktop one, right? Yes. We can see your screen. We just can't see you. Okay. Well, let me try this again. I'm sorry. That's okay. If you just want to go with your screen, maybe your camera will catch up with you in a little bit. <laughs> okay. It's okay if it doesn't. Okay, so can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, does it just say Zoom? Yes, right now it does. Well, anyway. I'm Connie Siner. I hate this. This is doing this. And I do teach for Red Rock uh, Frontier Schools. I do get to teach fifth, the fifth and sixth grade elective. Um, I have about 10 kids each semester, so it's small enough that we can do a lot. Um, I'm going to take you through a lesson called Mud in the Water. And uh, show you a few things we do during our elective how we use the website, where we get our info, and then we're going to finish up making a model, which you're not, might not be able to see. I don't know, unless we get things fixed. I might push a button here in a minute that...
Just trying, I'm still trying to mess with it. Should I sign back in? Would that help? If you want to try that, because it looks like everything is set right. So while she's doing that, I'm going to share just a couple of things um, with you so we can give her the opportunity to get, get where we can see her. Um, let me pull up quickly. Um, I can't figure out how to leave this one. We love technology when it works right and the rest right. of the time frustrating. And everyone's going to be there. And so we all understand and we're all very patient with each other now. <laughs> so um, let me pull up our Ag in the Classroom website while she is getting set back up to rejoin us. Um, and Connie, if you just want to leave the Zoom session and then just log back in, I think that might be your best bet. Okay. So under resources, Connie's going to be sharing lots of resources with you. But under the resources tab, you can click the classroom resources and we have a Google link. And let me get this out of the way. We have a Google link um, that you can click on to request any of our resources. Everything that Ag in the Classroom has in Oklahoma is free. And we will send that to you um, when you request it. So uh, if you... If you see something that Connie talks about today and you think I would really like to have that in my classroom, then be sure and send us a, that link, fill it out, and we will get it to you as soon as we can. And Connie is logged back on and so hopefully her camera is going to work for her this time. It worked so well last week and so uh, we want you to be able to see the um, lab that she has set up to share as she goes through her presentation. So, um, Connie, uh, if you just want to start your video, maybe before you start screen sharing, and we'll try it that route this time. Still no? Still no. Does your device have two cameras possibly? Is it, is it using? Not that I know of. All right. Well, we're gonna, just going to let you present your screen and share that and okay. maybe it'll decide to start working. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. So we're going to go through mud in the water. Um, I'm going to give you a few slides that uh, would be done by a student. We do a lot of slideshows and bulletin boards and We've even done videos with still pictures. So, um, get rid of this. okay. So, of course, they'd have a title: soil erosion. Our information came from Ag in the classroom, and then their name. Thousands of years ago, people began to farm because they found they could produce more food than they could by hunting and gathering. Over the years people discovered that some farming practices were harmful to the land. That included cutting down trees, clearing vegetation, and overgrazing. And it caused big problems. It caused algae growth, destroyed habitats, and it ruined the, our, uh, the beds for our aquatic friends. And this is just, uh, this is our vocabulary. Just put in a different, a different way, and that's on ABC. Yeah. Um, okay. So those were slides like the kids would have done. Um, they're usually when they come into the classroom, they're good with images, fonts, color, and typing, of course. Um, some of them know how to copy and paste, and some of them know how to search. But we introduce, of course, slides. Uh, usage rights for the images, plagiarism, editing others' work and presentations. They have to get up in front and uh, read their slides, and that's when they, if they haven't edited good or well, that's when they, uh, they usually notice um, after they think it's perfect. They have to figure out what audience they're writing to. Sometimes we'll go down to the pre-K or the kindergarten and teach a lesson. Um, 
We learn how to insert links into the slides and early finishers, we just go into transitions on the slides. I'm gonna go into the Agony Classroom website and show you a few things that we use. On the Lessons tab, they're cross-referenced by title, topic, grade level, okay? So if you know it was about soil, you can go in to the title section and click S for soil. And these are all your S's, okay? They're all in alphabetical order in that one. The next one on the lessons tab is by topic. You can either go into animal agriculture or plant agriculture. And I never realized until we started doing this how difficult it is for some kids to say agriculture. Um, and other ones try to teach them, you know, how to do it. By grade level. Okay, so if you're middle school, you can go straight to this grade six through eight, but don't discount the ones that are lower. Um, there's, there's still, I've got one, I'm going to show you that it's, they're still, still good for your class. So the one I'm going to do today is mud in the water. So we're going to go by lesson title. Okay, so mud in the water. Standards are for fifth, sixth, and eighth. has your academic standards, your materials. This one also needs glitter right here. And then your procedure, your vocab, and your project, the instructions for your project. So, and I'm gonna take you through that in a little bit. <laughs> I can't get that out of the way. Let me go back here. Okay, resources. There is a ton of information on this one. Under classroom resources, we're going to go to the activity books. And it will tell what, what grades. This, this one's for pre-K uh, through three. Here's four through 12. And this one down here is also four through 12. And if you don't have those, you can get those through Ag in the Classroom just by asking. Uh, if you don't have them, they are, everything is on here. So you could, you could put this into Google Classroom. You could do this on the uh, smart board. But there are all kinds of uh, more information for the kids to use. I'm just gonna keep going back here. Nutrition posters are also in the classroom resource section. Yeah. Okay, these are also available through Ag in the Classroom, they're free. And I do a scavenger hunt with these. I want you to look at them for a minute. And I've got, I've got a sample that I'm gonna show you. But we'll hang these, we'll hang these all over the place and uh, kind of hide them in places. And I've got three 15 question uh, pages that are gonna be available to you. <laughs> and Kahoot. Someone, uh, the last presenter mentioned Kahoot. 
It's also on resources. And the kids absolutely love these. And these are all ready, ready for you to use in the classroom. Uh, we have individual devices in the classroom, so they all get, they get their laptops out and um, it's, it's a great way to study. You can make your own, uh, like if you're going to study for a science test and uh, my grades have improved since I've started using Kahoot. I can't figure out how to get that little bar out of the way. I'm sorry, I have to keep going back to my slide. It's kind of wasting time. Okay, under resources, we've got food and fun. And if you scroll down, how to have an ag day. This is what I use to have my first ag day. You can schedule out or you can schedule your, uh, or draw out your grid for your ag day where all your booths are gonna be. There's a stick horse rodeo, uh, relay races. You can have, we made butter. We, had, uh, we showed pigs with balloons and yardsticks. So clucking chickens with a little cup and a string. And the kids still talk about it. The ones that presented it and the ones that got to go to it. So that's, that's big fun at the end of the year after testing. There's also humor on that page. Um, lots of little jokes. Resources. The resources. Let's go to teacher, teacher tools. There are things on here for ELA, math, science, the research paper. There we go. How to write a research paper. Okay. This is what I used when my principal asked me to uh, see if I could get all 15 kids six feet apart in my classroom. So it was right there. And the scientific explanation tool. Okay. Those are just handy to find. There was something this morning, Audrey. Um, I can't think of what it was. The last presenter used it and you had the... The Jamboard or on our website? On your website. Um, oh, I can't remember if it was in here. I don't think it is. The, hang on, hang on. Are you talking about the engineering sheets? Yes. They're under resources, under classroom resources, the engineering design process. So there we go, okay. They are. So if you were watching that one. Okay. That bar is not showing up for some reason now and it's just as easy as, okay, here we go. The last one I'm gonna show you on resources is agricultural facts. I've used this one for years and years. Um, click on beef. Here are, here are, there's tons of facts on here about beef. Um, anything you wanna study. This is where we get our bulletin boards. Let me go back to, I'm gonna use peanuts. You highlight, you can highlight the whole deal if you want to. Copy and paste, put it on your sheet, then decide what you don't want, delete that, and change your font, your size, put them all to one page, each one to a page, and your bulletin board is done. So it's just very handy. Okay. 
Okay, this was another, this is, these are other favorites that we like to do in the classroom, fit with fiber. This one, um, we talk about what fiber does for your body and it, it grosses them out a little bit, but they get past it. And then we bring out the fiber cereal and uh, taste test it. And usually the day after we do this lesson, they'll come back. This is the one I use, Fiber One Honey Clusters. And when they come back the next day to school, they've usually gone to the grocery store and had their parents buy it. They like it that much. We've used grape nuts. We've used Rice Krispies. And that all ties into the read before you eat. And this is the fourth and fifth grade level. And that's what I said about don't discount the, the lower ones because this is where we read the side panels of all of those cereals and see how much fiber. And we look at the calories. A lot of them don't know that when they buy a big Gatorade or a big giant Dr. Pepper, it, you know, it says so many calories on it. Well, that's not, there's not, there's more than one serving in that bottle. And they don't realize that until uh, we go over this lesson. And just yesterday, um, this, um, we were discussing percents and we noticed that protein didn't have a percent on it. So we Googled that. And this, this is what we got. Trans fat, sugar and protein rarely have a daily value percentage listed on the nutrition label. This is because they haven't established any specific guidelines about how much a person can consume for optimal health. So I don't know how many times I've done that lesson and just realized that. So you never know what you're gonna find. We discussed the, the characters and the bright colors on the sugary cereals. So there's a lot that comes in to play. This is the scavenger hunt that I do with the nutrition posters. I don't just have them find a peanut on the poster, okay? Um, it says one bale of cotton weighs about 480 pounds. We'll make 215 pairs of blue jeans, 680,000 cotton balls, or six and a half million cotton swabs. And one of their questions might be, how many pairs of jeans can be made from seven cotton bales? So on the, on the food, you can get into decimals. So you can do the addition, multiplication, division, however you wanna do it. But I've got three made up that have the answers and are ready to go. This is just a sample. And I put this on last night and I, I had never thought about it, put, thought about putting it on Google Classroom, but you could put five questions and then link the posters and they can do it at home. So that makes that, you could even do it at the class and not have to get the posters out, so. The National Ag in the Classroom website, we use it for Journey 2050. It's a game that you meet families from around the world um, and you grow crops for them. And they get to pick a crop and then they water and they, they decide how, uh, what nutrients to put on the crop they have an opportunity for investments and to give to charities. And then at the end of that, of each level, it will tell them their available funds and their results of how they did. Okay, so we're back to Mud in the Water, our lesson. You're gonna need four two liter plastic bottles and keep one bottle cap. You need a permanent marker, scissors, razor knife, push pin, measuring cups, topsoil and sand, mulch or sod, and then water. Okay, on the razor knife, I suggest just starting, you're cutting those plastic bottles. So you might start it for them with the razor knife and let them finish off with the scissors because it is really sharp. And the plastic is really slick when you're cutting on it. This is your first, uh, one of your first uh, bottles. It's a tray and you will have two trays 
And if you can see, I've cut, I've cut along. If you go outside, you can see the seams down the bottle of a two liter bottle. So you're gonna cut along those seams and then you're gonna cut on each end, leave each end, and that gives it better stability. They are kind of wobbly. So here are your two trays and you're gonna put a half, an inch, a half of an inch of sand in the bottom of each one. And then you're gonna put soil on the top, on top of your sand. You will leave one just like that. And then in the other one, this is animal bedding we, we're using for mulch. And you're gonna add the animal bedding. And I was so excited to show you that my grass was growing, but I don't think you're gonna to get to see it. So I've got grass growing in this one also. It took forever for it to come up. Okay, this is a picture of the lesson. You're gonna cut out, this is your base. You're gonna cut out this pattern right here and you're going to, you've got a front. Actually, this is the back. Okay, you're gonna cut, it's three inches above the bottom. And then on the other side, you're gonna go an inch from the bottom and cut, use this pattern as well. So here's your, here are your two. You want them different levels. So you'll have a little slant there. Okay, here's your base. Here is the finished product. And I've got it, it is working behind me right now. And when you're finished, you can ask your kids to define erosion and other suggested vocabulary. What causes erosion? What problems can erosion cause? How can it be avoided? Where have students seen samples or examples of erosion in your community? And when you're planting your tree or your trays, if you've got 10 different kids in there, you don't wanna plant grass in all of them. So you can kind of have them pick what kind of seeds, what they wanna grow in their trays. So you'll get a different um, result each time. This is a picture in our backyard. We had trouble with our mulch. Um, every time it rained, it would wash it away. So we put rocks up in a different pattern than this and the water still ran off and made the uh, displaced the mulch. So we put this one in the front to stop the water and it kind of disperses out and this is where mulch stays now. So that was one example of what we, how we can fix erosion. Um, I'm going to go to the National Ag in the Classroom website real quick. And we're going to look at the Teacher Center. These are virtual field trips that you can send the kids on. I would play one, but it, it causes my computer to uh, stop. So I'm not gonna do that. The Ag in the Classroom store has prepackaged kits, as well as videos on how to do them. Where's the... I hope it doesn't. Okay, so you've got videos, I'm not gonna play it. So that's really neat. Um, the state Ag in the Classroom has, everything is free from there. These are, these cost a little bit, but they, they're, they're really nice. Knowledge. This is where you can find out what your kids know or don't know. And state ag facts. More information from each, each state. 
And Audrey, you said these are updated often? Yes, at least once a year they're updated. And so um, each state, if you want to click on another state, each state's um, state facts are very similar in how they're set up. So your students could do research for um, Oklahoma and then also compare it to agriculture in another state. Um, also on the national site, there's a, a link that has all of the state contacts uh, email addresses, as well as mailing addresses and phone numbers. So sometimes we will get a letter in the mail or an email from a student in another part of the country and they're doing research and they're wanting to find out about Oklahoma. And oftentimes we will um, not just reply to their questions, but send them a few items, some of our resources, things like that. So uh, we would suggest doing that as well. The state contacts are great to work with um, all across the nation. We, we know many of them personally, and it's exciting um, to get to partner with them. So they're a great resource for your classroom and you can get more information um, about something maybe a little bit different than what we have in Oklahoma or similar to what we have and do a comparison. So good resource. Awesome. Okay, on the Student Center, you've got Career Seeker. Maybe. Let me go to the website. And you've got 41 videos of what the kids could be when they grow up. And they're just short two to three minute videos. So we usually just, we'll just take a day or the first part of the day and say, give me a few and we'll look at them. And this is a good time too. We haven't mentioned this today. We mentioned it last week, but we have a new careeropoly board game that will be coming out. We're supposed to hopefully see previews of it this week. Um, it should be at our office. I'm going to guess sometime late August, first part of September. And since you are participating in our professional development, we will be contacting you to get those games to you because I know when we do um, workshops in person, we typically give you many of our new resources and we haven't been able to do that since we're not in person this year, but we wanna get those to you. So we will uh, make sure and get those sent out to you as soon as we get them. Awesome. My kids love Cropopoly. So Careeropoly is gonna be fun. Okay, Ag Today. I didn't show these last time, but we love these. Now, are these from the national or are these from state? Um, these are national. Illinois actually, not Illinois, I'm sorry, I believe Idaho. Idaho actually um, created these first and then national reprinted them. We do have a few copies of the Ag Today readers here in Oklahoma that we can get out to you, um, but you can also request them from the national website. So um, if you want a specific one, then I would go to their site. If you um, just want one, you could shoot us an email and we can get this sent to you. They're not on our request form. Um, we got them for a conference a year or two ago. I think we gave them out. And so yes. we have a few left and we'd love to share them with you. Okay, that's where I got mine, uh, year before last. But they're on here, if you can get them blown up and put them on your smart board, I think, I think you can still read them. So they're full of information. And we'll do, I'll just, each kid will pick a one to read or to do a short report on. And we've got the state ag facts. Those are on, on the teacher website as well. Okay, so that's cross-reference cross there. Games. We've talked about the 2050. There are other games on here that the kids can play.
even after I did uh, the presentation last week, I still found new things, even this week. Virtual tours, okay, those are cross-referenced on both teacher and student. So, and then of course over here in the affiliates, that's the contacts that Audrey was talking about a minute ago, where you can get each state. Okay. Well, if you can't see me, I can't show you the rest of the um, what should I do? Honey, if you want to go ahead and stop sharing your screen. Okay. Audrey, could you just completely like make her back an attendee and then bring her back and see if that would help? Yeah. Let's try that. That's a good idea. Connie, just hang tight. We're going to okay. shift around a little bit. And Emily is going to come on and, and talk to you guys for just a little bit about um, one of the resources that Connie showed you. And while she's doing that, I'm going to try to get Connie's um, camera working. Thank you. Audrey, can I share? Will that mess you up while you're doing yeah, that? You okay. should be able to share. Okay, I haven't done this, so hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I'll be able to do it. My desktop is a little crazy. Okay, can everybody see it okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Okay, well, Connie had brought up, um, this is where you can actually access our activity books. Um, you go to resources and then classroom resources and can do the activity books, uh, which is really handy. But I wanted to kind of showcase one um, that is a great resource for middle school students. And to be quite honest, we have very few of these at the office. And um, the reason why why I'm bringing it up is we are currently redoing it. Um, so this is our current. Um, many of you may have this in your classroom or may have used it in your classroom before, but it's called our Oklahoma Ag Mag. Um, has lots of great resources in it, but what we're doing is we're actually redoing that. And I've been working with our graphic designer and um, I was going to give you a little bit of a preview of what the new one is going to look like. This is not a final product at all. <laughs> we still have a lot to add, but I figured I would give everybody kind of a preview of what that is going to look like. I think we are going to have a different cover on the front. I don't want you to get stuck on that particular cover, uh, but we'll just go through some of these. And of course, it's not completely laid out. We have a lot of changes still to make. Uh, but one thing I really wanted to do was give everyone an idea of our top commodities in the state uh, based on cash receipts. So that's a big thing we're going to cover is basically cover the top 10 um, agricultural products in the state and then cover those at least a page or two within the entire magazine. So we also have the definition of agriculture and cover a little bit more of the sci science aspect and the different parts of agriculture. Uh, that we talk about in our state. We'll also have kind of a STEM area. Again, just a preview. This is still a work in progress, but adding a few things, um, updating a lot of our information on how many cattle we have in the state, um, also what they're used for. Um, we have a lot of vocabulary over here on the side, breeds that are very common here in Oklahoma. We also added influential people, talking a little bit about Temple Grandin and what she's done in the cattle industry. Um, of course, our um, all about pigs or hogs, um, swine in this particular location. And we're hoping to get this to print um, hopefully by the end of August and hopefully be able to get this out to our teachers um, near the beginning of the school year. So what I like about this, there are a few activities that we're going to add in the magazine that you can use matching stuff. One thing I did add in this page, um, any of you that teach math or would like to do some math stuff in your classroom, we have a great lesson on ear notches and pigs, which if any of you are not familiar with pigs, um, on pig farms all over the United States, they actually use an ear notching system to actually tell which 
which litter the pigs are from and also which pig number. Um, often you'll see pigs with notches in their ears. Um, the reason we don't use tags as much is because kids or pigs um, are very curious animals. So a lot of times they'll get them ripped out very easy just messing with stuff. And anybody can interrupt me if we get Connie's picture back up. Um, a few things we talked about broilers, and um, that's a big thing in our state. Of course, wheat, um, able to break down the parts of a wheat combine and, and talk about a kernel of wheat. Um, cotton, of course, we're changing a couple of things on that page. But anyway, talk about Eli Whitney and then actually the the life cycle, I guess, of a cotton plant um, talks about the bale of cotton, talk about soybeans, uh, which we talked a little bit about soybeans in our last session, um, dairy cattle. Anyway, this page will pay change. We haven't really done much with that yet. The corn page, we raise a lot of corn for livestock feed here in the state of Oklahoma. That is in our top 10 commodities. And we'll change a little bit on the back. Um, again, it is a work in progress, but we are super excited about that. And I think that'll be an awesome resource for everyone to use in their classroom and have a lot of updated information. Uh, we're also going to put um, gardening stuff in there. A lot of that has been sent. Um, also, we're having a career section as well, where we are actually doing interviews with people out in the agricultural industry um, and putting those interviews in there. So there's a lot of things that weren't in our last magazine that are going to be added to the new one. So we hope it is a resource that you'll be able to use in your classroom. Thanks, Emily. And for those of you that are on that are ag teachers, Emily used to be an ag teacher. The pictures of the pigs are going to be yes. updated. So <laughs> they are, yes. Cringed, that's on her, her list to do as well. Um, it looks like Connie's camera still is not working. What I think maybe it is, and this is just a helpful hint for you teachers that are going to be using Zoom with your students, um, possibly she needs a Zoom update. That's what we found out last week when some screens went black. The problem with doing that though and trying to get back on quickly, I learned um, during COVID is it takes a long time and it's not always a guarantee that it's going to work and then you're, you're not able to do your session. So we are better to have her presenting the way that she did today. Um, I did see a comment come in that says, do you consider renewable energy payments to farmers as part of the cash crop income? Um, and then is there, are there any renewable energy STEM slash STEAM activities within your curriculum? So we do have some energy lessons um, in our curriculum. They are being... I just posted some of them in the link. I mean, okay, the great, great. Melody's put those in there for you. So um, they will be updated, but we do have some. And also we have a few minutes. So um, for those of you who have been or that were on earlier, one of the lessons that Dusty talked about was bovine oversteps boundaries. And Connie has shared some of the lessons uh, with you as well. So I just wanna show you what the lessons are going to look like. We're updating them. Um, we found out today that we have a new part-time curriculum person that will be helping us with this finally. So since Pat retired, it's been us. And so we're excited to have someone new. But just all of our lessons will be transitioning to this layout. Um, so it looks a little bit different than what we've had in the past. And we're super excited. We feel like it's a better option for you and a little bit more um, user friendly as well. So on the activity pages, um, this one has the, um, the bovine oversteps boundaries. So this goes with Grady, the silo cow that Dusty talked about earlier. I don't have one of the ones that Connie shared um, updated to share with you, but the Oklahoma Ag Academic Standards will be listed not just with the number, but also with the text. So hopefully that is more beneficial. The materials list will come next and then the procedure for you. For this one, um, the procedure is a few pages and then it gets into 
the pages for the students. So this is the reading passage. And then um, for this one, they're creating possible headlines and rewriting to make their own news story based on the information that they read. And then this one is captioning the photographs. So this is an ELA activity and lesson, um, but all of our lessons are going to have this update. So they will be more modern and um, hopefully more um, user friendly for you and your students. So um, that's one thing that we wanted to let you know about. Also, um, Connie shared that she has scavenger hunts. Those will be in her Google file that we will share out with you next week. So the session links will be shared next week. Professional development certificates for you will be there. And then um, there are slideshows and recordings of this. So within Connie's folder, when it comes out, we will share her scavenger hints for you. And the posters that she used for that, again, are a resource that you can request uh, from us. So you just go to that resource request page that we showed you at the beginning, and it's on the um, classroom resources on our website. Let us know that you want those posters and we will send them to you. And in that particular set, you'll get six um, How Would You Rather Eat posters that are nutrition based, and then six Did You Know Fun Fact posters um, that have fun facts. One of my favorite fun facts that's on that poster for the cotton one is the fact that money is made from cotton and linen and not from paper. So even though we call it paper money, it doesn't fall apart when we wash it, which is a good thing because I washed $5 in my pocket last night and I had a nice surprise whenever I put my, my pants on today, it was still there for me. So not only did I have $5, but it wasn't shredded like a note would have been if I would have left that in my pocket or a check. And so that's how I explain it to the students. And oftentimes they're fascinated by that fact and they do not realize that um, that money is not made of paper. So that's one of the fun facts that's on the posters that you can get. Um, if anyone has any final questions or comments, be sure to type them in the chat box. If not, I'm gonna be closing out this session, but I do want to remind everyone that we have a great session for you if you're using Google Classroom um, at your school. And so that session, is tomorrow, or I'm sorry, excuse me, Thursday morning at nine o'clock and it's Jocelyn Puckett's session. Um, one of our workshops today, which was the, um, it was during Dusty's session, she talked about the Temple Grandin books and lessons. Jocelyn is gonna show you how she changed those to a Google Classroom and an online format. So that's nine o'clock. Everyone should have gotten that session link even if you did not sign up for it. And it does say elementary focus, but I'm here to tell you anyone, um, any grade level would benefit from watching that session. I've had a pre-K teacher send me an email and say she's already used it. And I know a high school teacher that's already used it. So be sure to join us for that one. Connie, I know you can still hear us. So thank you so much for doing a great job. I wish we could have seen your um, plants that you have growing. I know, it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. The start of it, we'll, we'll share your webinar link from last week too, so they can see kind of what you were talking about. Okay, thank um, you. I mean, maybe you could take a picture of your plant and uh, share with us and we'll post that. I will, it's not so much the plant, it was after the water, the both trays ran through, you can definitely see how the roots and the mulch help keep everything in place. So I'll take a picture of that too and put it on there. Right, that's a great idea. And if you wanna send it to us today, we can put it on Facebook as well. I do okay. see one hand is raised. So let me go over. Judy um, McCartney, did you have a question? If you did, if you wanna type it in the chat box, we've got just a second or put it in the Q and A. Um, we can see it a little bit faster. She may have just accidentally raised her hand, but I want to make sure if she had a question that we get it answered. I'm going to give her just a little bit. 
All right, I'm not seeing anything come in, so maybe, oh wait, there might be. Um, there is a question, is there a way we can get links to last week's sessions? Yes, so when we send out the links for this week, there will also be links from last week. Um, everything's going to be housed in one spot on our website, so you'll have access to every session, whether you attended it or not. Um, so that's going to be uh, great for you. So, all right, well, I'm going to go ahead and close out. Thank you for joining us. We hope that you'll join us again either this afternoon or on Thursday. Um, if you didn't sign up and you want to, just send me an email and I'll be glad to send you those links. And again, thanks so much, Connie, and everyone have a great afternoon.